On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a report of a 60 pounder taken and released in the Western Sound. We also have the results from last week's Bergen Bay Dock Striped Bass Tournament and our correspondents check in from around the island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, June 16th, and the Western Sound has been putting up some big bass like this one caught by Rick Moeller, estimated to be 60 plus pounds. Max Finch of the Fisherman's World in Connecticut will have all the detail later in the broadcast. Now let's get the latest from the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash. We start our weekly Dreamboat Fishing Challenge update by announcing our May Fish of the Month winner for Week Fish. And that is Dean Payella with a 8.7 pound, 29 inch weak fish weighed in at We Go Bait and Tackle. The New Jersey subscriber caught his fish off a of shelter island on Long Island and takes first place for weak fish. Dean wins a Tsunami, a Vic spinning reel, and a Dexter fillet knife. Dean's on a roll as he also just entered a second place sea bass at 4.37 pounds and is the current total point first place angler with 22 points. Rob Corazano is in second place with 18 points. Garrett Weir holds third place with 17 points. And Daniel Del Rosario is in fourth place with 10 points. New entries in the Dream Boat keep coming in. In the Bluefish category, Eddie Terrible weighed in a 15.5 pounder. And Fluke Mike Schuler entered a 11.2 pounder. Joseph Yam entered a 7.81 pound fluke. And in the Weakfish category, Paul Alabrano entered a 5.72 pounder. That's the Dream Boat News of the Week. You too can fish the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge for a chance to win a Steigercraft 23 Miami with a Yamaha outboard and many other prizes. Remember, only subscribers to the Fisherman Magazine can enter. Hey guys, it's Dave Anderson. We're just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. The first fish we're going to talk about is a 15 and 3 quarter inch Porgy entered by Eric Lopez, which is good enough for third place in the Porgy category. Next, we're gonna move down to sea bass. We got Bob Wagner with a 20 incher, which is good enough for third place, and Mark Carlson with a 22 incher, which is now holding second place. The big fish of the week was a 46 inch striped bass taken by none other than Justin Oser. That gives him second place in the striper category and puts him at a comfortable lead for the tournament with 10 points. The next closest competitors are all sitting pretty with three. Someone's gotta make a ball game out of this, so who's it gonna be? We don't know yet. Get out there in those kayaks, get those photos in, and uh, let's make this a ball game. Let's not let our good friend Justin Oster run away with this thing. Good luck out there, guys. We'll see you next week. Last weekend, Bergen Bay Docks and West Babylon held their bass tournament. Over 100 anglers were involved in the competition. Matt Overlino's crew was the winning boat, weighing in their two heaviest fish for a combined weight of 32.2 pounds. Second place was Brian Mern's crew with 30 pounds. And third place was George Dixon's boat with 27.6 pounds. This weekend is the South Shore Invitational. The captain's meeting was last night, but there is still time to enter. You can enter online up until Friday at noon by hitting the link in the description of this video. Speaking of Bergen Bay Docks, their new ice maker is up and running. So if you need lots of ice, go see the crew. 100 pounds for 15 bucks. Not a bad deal at all. Great for parties too. All right, let's go around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. The large striper bite along the south shore of the island has held up during the week. Fish up to 50 pounds are being caught between Shinnecock and Mauritius on lures, rubber sheds, and trolling mojos. But keep in mind, these fish are on the move following the bait, so they may not be in the same spot two days in a row. Back on the south shore bays, fluking is picking up in the shallows for the light tackle enthusiasts. Give gulp or fish bites a try on a light bucktail. These areas around the western bridges have been decent, along with the state channel and the backwaters of Mauritius and west of the bridge at Shinnecock. We heard fish over 8 pounds were taken during the week. Over on the north shore, I heard the fluke bite between Smithtown and Mount Sinai has been okay with fish up to 5 pounds taken on small hold squids and spearing. The western portion of the sound is seeing some bigger stripers with some great porgy fishing mixed in too. Eight-year-old Daniel Scalisi caught and released a 46-inch striped bass on a frozen bunker chunk from the beach in the Hempstead area. The large bluefish are still roaming the sound from the triangle off of Eaton's Neck to Stratford Shoal. Fish up to 15 pounds are commonly being caught on top order lures, trolling tubes, and jigs. 
out east the Peconic saw a better fluke bite in the waters around Shelter Island with an impressive keeper to short ratio. Porgies, bluefish, and some weak fish are still cooperating in the Peconics. A little further out in the gut and the race, stripers up to 30 pounds are being consistently caught on bucktails and jigs. Out in Montauk, the amazing striper fishing has continued through the week with bass over 50 pounds caught in Ruiz once again. Jigging, trolling, and casting top roller lures, and even the fly rod are getting the job done. Some large bluefish are mixed in with the stripers too. Fluke fishing in Montauk was off to a slower start, but I did hear within the last week the bite picked up a bit and some limits were achieved. This week's winner of the fuel giveaway from Marine Mate in Lindenhurst is Brian McShane. He just won $125 worth of fuel at Bergen Bay Docks in West Babylon. For every $100 you spend in Marine Mate, you get entered into the fuel drawing. A new winner will be picked every week for the month of June. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin is still on the morning bite in the southwest Nassau Bay. So let's see what he has for the weekend weather outlook. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's uh, check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, favorite websites, weather tools, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend across Long Island. So water temps have come up uh, quite a bit. We got some mid to upper 60s, low 60s in the sound, so I'm doing a little bit better there. It's going to be a windy weekend, though. We've got a uh, hard north-northwesterly breeze both Saturday and Sunday. Watch the wave heights go 2 to 4, 4 to 8, even some 8 to 12s. Not the weekend to go offshore. It's going to be blowing pretty good, about 20, 25 uh, plus knots there. Settles down a little bit Sunday, midday afternoon, but still about 20 knots, uh, 2 to 4, 4 to 8s there. We'll get a little better Sunday evening. Futurecast, you can see 20 to 25, a northwest breeze, dry. A lot of sunshine both Saturday, Sunday, but, uh, you know, it's going to be gusty there, maybe by Sunday, midday afternoon. We start to lose the wind a little bit. But, uh, you know, going to be kind of a choppy weekend all across the island. High tide Saturday, north shore for the afternoon, south shore about midday. Temperatures, you know, not bad, comfortable. Some low to mid-70s both uh, Saturday and Sunday. Let's check that guru and, you know, confirming. You kind of see here that hard north-northwest here, 20, 25, maybe gust to 30. Uh, you know, maybe three to five, four to six foot waves here on Saturday in the ocean. And, Sunday, really not much better. Still a lot of wind there, you know, 20, 25 knots here. You know, the waves come down a little bit, but I do see, uh, you know, a gusty weekend. So maybe the sound, maybe the surf a little bit better. The bay's okay. Anyway, you slice it. Uh, be safe no matter what you do. Catch them up. Have a great weekend. Matt, back to you. It's time to check in with our correspondents. Let's start off with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody from Montauk. I'm actually out here off the point. Uh, doing a little diamond jigging, doing a little bucktailing, uh, using some popping uh, surface plugs too. As everybody's heard, the bass bite out here has been incredible. Whether you're diamond jigging, bucktailing, you name it, uh, fish up to 50 pounds is a pretty consistent number. Um, guys are reeling in 30, 40 fish in a clip, so it's been really good. Um, everything's been working really well on uh, flies. Uh, I had my customer Fred Hyatt out. He had his personal best 40 inch bass uh, last night. I'm out here with my two kids tonight. We're trying to do the same thing. Uh, in the fluke department, Flukin's definitely turning around. Little Steven Forsberg on the five star was out Sunday. I got a photograph of him with his son uh, with a 13, no, 12 and a half pound fluke. He also had a 10-pounder that day and a 13-pounder that day. So Fluke's starting to pick up um, all the other head boats, Ed, Ebb Tide, Miss Montauk. Those guys are putting some decent Fluke across the, uh, the rails. So definitely consider getting out here, um, getting on a party boat. The offshore report, really not a whole lot going on out here yet. So hopefully, you know, with fuel prices, guys aren't really searching yet. So I'll keep you posted. Back to you, Matt. Thank you. From Sag Harbor, we have Will Graham. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. Bottom fishing still going pretty strong. Fluking starting to pick up in the bay and really out towards Montauk. We got on some bass and blues this weekend, which was nice. Bass bite's been pretty hot, but obviously it's you gotta pick through the blues, which has definitely been, a, been an issue, but it's still a lot of fun. Uh, on the sharking front, people have really been starting to get some threshers recently, so that's really cool on the action. And offshore, we're seeing yellows and blues all the way across the edge to the canyon and, and everywhere in between. So it's gonna be a great season. We're looking forward and we have a long, uh, long time ahead. Thanks guys. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks Matt, hey everyone. Fishing is pretty solid. Uh, obviously you had that wind and weather last week that kind of shut things down for a bit. 
word of God, very, you know, kind of chocolatey off the beach. However, in the last couple of days, the end of incoming has produced some nice bass. A little bit uh, better fishing down towards Mauritius, although Shinnecock has had a good number of fish. Uh, it seems to be a little more in the inlet, and, you know, and, you know, very close to the inlet of Mauritius versus in Shinnecock the inlet and also out into the ocean and to the east just a bit. Fluke bite is there, but, uh, you know, nothing really too great to report of yet. There, I heard uh, yesterday of a couple of keepers um, west of Ponquag Bridge, you know, Bowie Nine, that, that general kind of area that's, um, you know, a pretty popular spot to begin with for going at them in skinny water. Um, you know, Peconic still seems to be doing pretty well with the, you know, with the porgy bite and weak fish. There are some bluefish that are still around, nothing like we had a few weeks ago. Now it's kind of the smaller nuisance size while uh, going for bass, so donated a few soft plastics to, to those little guys uh, as well. Bluefin tuna have been some reports of uh, people seeing them. One east of Shinnecock, uh, not too far off the beach, just a splash, not somebody that was actively chasing them. Um, also a bit let, what, southwest of Mauritius, a couple of miles out. Uh, a few guys that were fluking saw some uh, big splashes. So that should start to get into full swing. You know, a few guys have gone out uh, out to the edge and came back with uh, multiple species, uh, including a really nice big eye for one of the Shinnecock boats. So it's happening. Things are in full swing. Get out there, catch them up. As always, leave your comments below. Uh, hit me up on social media, any questions or reports you want to share with us, and I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. As you know, Mike Dean is heavily involved with the Manhattan Cup, and the Fisherman just released a great video on this year's action. The link is in the description, or click on the card in the top right. Dylan Jewell from Mauritius has this report. Dylan. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone has had a chance to get out. The bass bite on the surf has been okay. Uh, majority of the fish have definitely seem to make their way out to Montauk. Uh, the boats are absolutely crushing them out there. Uh, there's still some uh, big fish on bunker pods, you know, central south shore. Uh, just got to find the bunker pods that are active, ones that are popping around more, and you should definitely be able to get on them. Uh, the North Shore bass fight has still been a pretty good uh, on the troll. Seems Mojo's um, definitely been doing the trick out there. Um, back bays still doing good with the fluke. Uh, there's some weak fish still in the mix. Um, out front, fluke fishing should be picking up pretty soon. The water warming up. Uh, sea bass is going to be starting about a week, week and a half. Um, bluefin. Bluefin bites been really turning up. Uh, lots of nice size bluefin out there. Jigging them, popping them. Uh, threshers, the bite remains hot. Um, there's definitely no shortage of fish out there, no matter if you want to go offshore, midshore, you know, off the surf, there's definitely fish around. So uh, get out there, catch them up, and talk to you guys next week. Back to you, Matt. Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle in Northport checks in. Listen, last that we spoke on our report, we were talking about the general lack of bluefish in our area. While they seem to be in Montauk and South Shore, we're just waiting for them to come down east. Well, this week, unbelievable. We've had bluefish for the past seven days, range from four pounds right up to 14 pounds. They have been really, really hot on the fish. You know, the last May um, moon phase, the bunker were finishing up their spawn. So large pods of bunkers shifted out of the harbor and they're in the sound. They were going to the east. They met up with the bluefish. They came together, red hot bass action. What happens is a lot of these bluefish are really chumming up the areas, creating great opportunities for chunkers to, to pick up larger uh, striped bass over slot limit bass. So keep your catch and release tight, get your pictures fast and uh, treat the fish really well because they're gonna be swimming, they're gonna stay local. We'll probably see between uh, Comset and Crane's Neck, fish are gonna slowly patrol those deep edges and we're gonna look for opportunities of spawns. This has been all about spawns. Long Island Sound has been so clean. These moon phases, you gotta really keep your eye on them. We're coming into a full moon phase and what a full moon phase means is fantastic opportunities saltwater fishermen that love the fly because there's most likely going to be big cinder worm hatches in those shallow areas you're going to look at stony brook areas you're going to look at uh nessaquag river the back of north port not so much duck harbor yes lloyd harbor you're getting the idea areas that are heavy with eelgrass and really pristine marshlands 
less developed areas are going to hold the largest spawns. Now, if you're a surf caster and you're working those sandy beaches, Sunken Meadow, Comset, right down to Crab Meadow and such, Comset especially, we're really going to look for hoping to see another sand eel hatch. We had a beautiful sand eel hatch early spring. Let's see what happens. If that sand eel hatch happens again, you sure as heck are going to see bluefish and bass move onto the beach in more readily uh, available ways to catch them. Opportunities, you're going to use needles, uh, stick shads, a lot of stuff that you can use. But aside from that, it's all about the spawn. Right now we've got the bluefish, they're spawning. They're gonna be in their 50 to 100 and something range. Look for them out in the sound. There's been action down by the Nesser Quag. The bluefish are generally, they're gonna do what bluefish do. They're gonna come in early in the morning or they're gonna come in the sunset. Don't expect to catch them during the day unless you're out in the boat area. And there's so many opportunities. On the fluke front, what does it mean when we get a lot of bluefish come in our area? It means that the fluke, are going to get out of the areas that the bluefish are in. So if you're having heavy uh, bluefish, most likely look for fluke in rocky structures. If there's heavy bluefish feeding, look towards the end of the tides when your uh, slack starts to happen. And that's when those heavy fluke are going to come out of the rocks and they're going to look for like chunks of, of pieces of, of bunker on the bottom. And they're just as much a scavenger as any other fish. That's a great opportunity to use larger... Um, strip baits and such for your fluke porgies porgies are fantastic um other fish in the mix nothing that i can think of other than what we've spoken about listen this weekend is operation real hero so if you're from the huntington northport centerport area you want to get involved it's not time really to sign up it's too late but you want to reach out you can always ask me a question i'll send you off to patrick goldsmith who runs it it's a fantastic uh wounded warriors project and uh it's going to be this saturday it's a lot of fun and so many memories you should find out maybe you get involved if you own a boat um other than that shop is going non-stop lots of rod builds if you want to get a rod for the fall now is the time to get your order in because it's a three to four month wait on all custom rods repair work goes out much faster so non-stop thank you everybody and to those people who have moved out of state um Wow, it's amazing. We've had so many friends and memories of people that have lived here and helped support the shop that have moved out of state in the past several years because of, you know, retirement taxes and such or just better life, you know? They're tired of New York. They follow these reports because they love the shop and love to fish in our area. And I have to say, I want to reach out and say thank you. I mean, those emails and, and messages and occasional visits when you're back visiting family, it, it really is just, it makes us feel great and it's what makes a family business part of a larger family community of, uh, of friends and, and folks that we meet every day and, and continue to have relationships with. Until next week, I bid you all peace, tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, I was checking with Captain Al Lawrence Eddie. Hey Matt, Fire Island Report. Uh, looks like weather's gonna be kind of tough this coming weekend, but the fishing is good. I had a great day this week, past week, with quality high-end slot fish, striped bass on live bait. Uh, a buddy of mine also had them on clam chum, so that's working well. And fluke fishing also picked up, it's gotten better. Again, more in the back bay, but uh, you know, anywhere from the Coast Guard Station now, it kind of seems in Fire Island, all the way back to Ocean Beach, and a couple of weak fish mixed in as well. Uh, bluefish, crazy blitz. I mean, up in the Big Bay, anywhere, you know, south of Bay Shore, all the way across the bay. I came across this morning, and it was just thousands of birds, bluefish busting water all over the place. And mixed sizes, anywhere from three to four pounds up to 10 and 12 pounds. So you never know what you're going to get into next. And so it looks like a good week, except for some tough weather coming up. So keep an eye on that. Find a window, get out there, and catch them up. Let's check in with KJ Kennedy from the Great South Bay. Thanks, Matt. So I don't have any firsthand reports from this past weekend. I actually took the weekend to edit a bunch of videos, and my latest video on Weak Fish dropped this past Sunday. But I've heard business as usual. We have bigger size fluke coming in out east. 
Mauritius, Belport Bay area. There's still a good mix of stripers and bluefish in the back bays. Got a bunch of reports that there are thresher sharks working bunker pods outside both inlets, Fire Island and Mariches. I heard the bunker, bunker pods are a little bit split up, but if you work them, you know, you could, you could definitely get on some thresher. And the tuna bite offshore is definitely heating up. I see, uh, I see a few different guys coming back with, uh, with reports that they've got on the tuna. So this weekend, it looks like Friday is gonna be blowing pretty hard. But between Saturday and Sunday, maybe early morning or late evenings, you can get out there and get on the fish. So catch them up and I'll see everybody next week. With our Flying Freshwater Report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. It's been another great week. Um, we actually came up here. I was, uh, I'm up here with a few friends. We decided to come up, fish the beaver kill, fish the world of Amac. Uh, I know we get enough time up there, so I really was excited to explore and my good friend Danny drove me all around, showed me all the different access points. It was really exciting. Uh, fishing is, was a little tough the first day, but Dennis, he worked and worked. Duck Dennis, he worked on this fish and he finally landed. It was a nice 14 inch brown. You have to change your flies and keep figuring out what they want. Uh, I was very fortunate last night, fishing the dark with my flashlight. Uh, I was able to put in about 15 fish nothing overly big biggest one was 12 inches there were a lot of uh 10 inches and uh, all on dry flies so it was pretty exciting i did lose one big fish but hey that's fishing as far as uh fishing on long island i was very fortunate i guided a newbie uh for uh, trout first time for he was the first time for trout greg was was first time greg and um and he also just got married, so he's a newbie on both ends. Uh, but it was really a fun time. We had a good time out there. Saltwater, Tim O'Rourke is posting out in Montauk. Big fish are in, in town. Uh, he's catching some beautiful, beautiful uh, bluefish and stripers. Uh, David uh, Flanagan on the North Shore, he's also posting uh, good fishing. So there's good fishing on both sides of the island, even in my area, the West End. Uh, it's freshwater fishing. All the ponds are really coming alive. Uh, all the bluegills are, are bedding up. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy fishing. This is the time. I know gas is expensive, but there is so much opportunity so close to Long Island. Don't give up fly fishing. Don't give up fishing. Just get out there when you can. Uh, until next week, tie lines, everybody. Chris Landry has the Jamaica Bay report for us. Thanks, Matt. Bad news. The big bass bunker bite in the back of the bay is a bust. The larger fish have mostly moved on. You can still get them if you want to get out at 4.30 in the morning for some stragglers. Otherwise, Jamaica Bay is in a transition where other fish are moving in. Some bluefish are moving in. I got my first weak fish. There's signs of uh, small bait accumulating. Otherwise, you have to head outside, outside Breezy Point and, and farther down to Jersey to get on big bass. Adrian from Bass Appeal promised me my PB the other day and he delivered. I got a 47 inch and then two 47 and a half inches for my PB. Went out the next day with wind hold charters. We ended up in New York Harbor by Statue of Liberty where we got on bass every couple minutes using spoons, doubling up and tripling up. In other news, if you want to network with other fishermen, go to Wits End, particularly on the night that Polo Grounds, AKA Polo Sportsman Official, holds a pop-up event. Follow their Instagram for that information if you want to network and socialize with other fishermen at a fisherman's restaurant with tuna, with Ron Z. Lures hanging out of the mouth and fishing artwork everywhere. I'll see you there. Okay, so thank you, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. And this week, Max Finch from Connecticut checks in with a report from the Western Sound. Max. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The striped bass fishing this past week has been nothing short but amazing. We've seen fish to over 60 pounds caught by Fisherman's World owner, Rick Mola, my boss and my friend. So congrats to Rick, that is a fish of a lifetime. We see numerous fish in the high 40 pound class and we've seen a bunch of 50 pound fish. I've probably known a 12 taken this past week. I've been trying to get one myself. I've been out four nights this past week, all nighters to sunrise and the fishing is red hot. We've seen fish from like 20 to 40 pounds on the chunk at night and drifting live bait. 
Guys plugging the islands in the morning are reporting a good bite. There's been a lot of like schoolies to slop size fish. And then on the south side of the islands, a lot of the bunker schools been holding. They've been harassing them in the morning and in the evening, and they've been smacking them at night on the high slack. Guys fishing deep water reefs like the OB, 11B, and 20AC are reporting a really good chunk bite through the night and the sunrise. The sunrise bite has been really good. I was out this morning, and we had fish to like 42 pounds. Shop employee Tyler had a 45 pounder, and by 8 a.m. it starts to taper off a little. If you still want to try to get these fish, you do got to work a little deeper water. Guys throwing the fly rod around the island are doing really well too. On the schoolies, throwing stuff like clousers. There are some slots and overslots in there. And then I would say guys trolling still like the 11B and OB. They're still getting them, but they're really getting chewed up by bluefish. So bunker spoons and umbrellas is a way to go and also deep divers. Fluke fishing this past week, it's been good, but it's starting to take a downward turn now. Guys are going to have to start pushing out to a little bit deeper water. I would say get out of that 30 foot and start moving out to like 40, 50, bump it out to 60, some humps out there and work some like deeper water reefs. The fluke like to hang around there. And then uh, bucktails, you know, squid spearing, stuff like that. Gulp. Porgies are actually, we've heard of two this past week caught from the beach. So, woo, it's about to take off. Last week we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey there guys, this is Ben checking in from Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. Here at the Marina Pez Vela right now, we've had an insane week for rooster fish. Just yesterday aboard my boat Good Day, we released six nice rooster fish, beautiful fish in the 20 to 25 pound range. Come down here guys if you're looking for a bucket list rooster fish. Offshore, we've had a really nice tuna bite as well. Lots of tuna in the 30 to 80 pound range. Uh, some bigger fish in the 100 pound class as well. Really nice tuna fishing. Right now is peak season for our offshore marlin fads. You gotta look into that guys. Best blue marlin fishery in the world. Hope you to see you down here soon. Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. Back to you guys, thank you. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this week's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.